Hey everyone, there were a series of elections this week, including Scotland, which we'll get to in a minute, but also local elections in England, with Labour losing more seats than Bill Gates will when he and Melinda divvy up the furniture in their divorce. A wave of condolences, of course, poured in from political allies of Labour, such as the IRA, Hezbollah, Iran and the Muslim Council of Great Britain. Apparently it turns out that voters don't want to vote for people whose main agenda is just claiming MPs' expenses, banning teaching of history in schools and maybe pushing for a referendum on rejoining the EU. The end result, of course, was that even Hartlepool didn't care to vote for Labour this time around and instead it turned bluer than that late night George Carlin routine or the time that Sean Ryder went on TFI Friday. You know, that last reference is a very 1990s one, but it has been over 15 years since Labour actually won an election. That, of course, was a year after Arsenal won the Premier League. You know, maybe it's something about wearing red. Peter Mandelson made reference to the party's malaise being down to the two C's, Covid and Corbyn, although most voters looked at the like of Peter Mandelson and Keir Starmer and saw another pair of C's. The embodiment of a niche lifestyle obsessed with maintaining a rigid class system where the rich people like them get to live in London and discuss legislation, not in Westminster, but in the lettuce page of The Guardian. And of course, a second working class kept at arm's length up north. Yeah, they should know their place and work for the public sector if they know what's good for them. If it's not enough public sector jobs to employ the entire English population, blame the Tories. If they want to study economics or start a business, Lord help them, they're a class trader. And if they dare to disagree with the BBC, that's a racist who hasn't listened to the correct podcast, you know, the one that tells you the correct facts to believe. You know, it's kind of difficult to see why this election wasn't any doubt, really. All that was needed was for Laura Kunzberg to call Hartley Poe for Joe Biden 20 minutes before the polls closed. Keir Starmer's condolence speech, of course, should include giving out his LinkedIn details or handing out his CV. But of course, the group think is that Brexit will definitely start to go wrong at some point in the next two to three years. And then finally, the public will wave the Labour Party back into power, just like they did in 1997, except instead of Union Jacks, it'll be a mix of EU and Palestinian flags. And maybe Jeremy Corbyn will ride along Downing Street in the back of a unicorn. North of the border, of course, so Scotland's a completely different animal, although ironically the national animal of Scotland is the aforementioned unicorn. Nonetheless, the SNP maintain a stranglehold on voters who wave flags, except of course for the match days at Ibrox, where the Union flag flies proud, lots of red, white and blue, especially in the flashing lights of the emergency services standing by. Nicola Sturgeon, of course, narrowly failed to win a majority at the ballot box, although that hasn't really stopped her demands to have yet another go at losing a referendum, probably by 52-48%, to 48%, same as they always are. You know, it's a bit like watching someone feeding money into a fruit machine waiting for it to pay out. I guess in that analogy, Alex Salmond would be the guy who quickly runs up and puts a fiver in while Nicola's at the bar. I guess, of course, I think the last time Alex Salmond was seen running was when you could probably still smoke in that fictional pub years ago. Either way, though, the SNP pitch remains very much like that Mel Gibson film they reference, a fantastical story but utterly lacking in facts or reality when it comes to incredibly basic questions like what currency would an independent Scotland use? Alex Salmon at least claimed it would be the pound with a joint stake in the national debt. Nicola though seems to think it's going to be the euro, but she can't say so because Spain will just point out that Scotland's banned from joining the EU, lest Catalonia get ideas about secession. Here's a second one. What if, as with Brexit, not areas of Scotland voted for independence? Would the likes of Dumfries and Galloway in the North East be allowed to have a third or fourth referendum in order to stay in the UK? What if Orkney and Shetland favour Oslo over Edinburgh? I would. These are seemingly simple questions that actually need answered. In that list of questions I'd like answers to along with if Cinderella's shoe fit perfectly then why did it fall off? Or if rabbit's feet are so lucky then what happened to the rabbit? Or have you ever seen an interview where the SNP are actually grilled or scrutinised by an impartial and credible interviewer? Anyway, one can dream I guess. See you next week. If you like these, please subscribe.